a genius play with graphics, how you can implement graphic design to communicate what it is you want without taking away the practicality of having an SUV. Polestar has simply gone and done it again and created a beautiful, gorgeous electric car. This is the Polestar 3. It packs 517 horsepower and 671 pound-feet of torque and has 300 miles of range. What I want to do in this video is talk about this design because this, I think Polestar is doing something unique in the car design community and that is mixing product design but still manages to make it feel emotional and that is something that is not easy to do so we're gonna have a look at the Polestar lineup and then show you what I think about this Polestar 3 from a front side and rear and also talk about a little bit about the interior because that, that is something I want to uh, I have some things to say about the interior here 0 to 60 it takes 4.9 seconds at a top speed of 130 miles per hour you can charge it standard it sounds like 10 to 80 percent in 30 minutes with a DC fast charger and the price is going to start around $85,000 which is is pretty expensive but still it is what it is and it's a pretty technology packed vehicle so let's have a look at the lineup and the evolution of Polestar I think it's pretty interesting if we look at the Polestar 1 and then as we go down to the concepts and the ones that are coming after the Polestar 3 and the evolution in the design the Polestar 1 up here was it was pretty much a conceptual vehicle and a Volvo in its essence a Volvo coupe it, it looks like the old uh, 1800 uh, modernized with these lines right here specifically this zigzag line in the shoulder line here which I love a tiny detail but the design language here doesn't really say anything else than Volvo looking at the front end it looks like a Volvo except that they have a Polestar um, grill and a Polestar logo up top here the headlights looks very much Volvo and so does the lower part of the front end but you know it's still a very very pretty car it looks absolutely fantastic moving on to the Polestar 2 now I read I can't remember if, if this is correct the how the Polestar 2 came to be is I think it was supposed to be a Volvo I could be wrong on this but this is what I remember I think it was supposed to be a Volvo model a normal internal combustion engine model but then they ditched that idea Volvo and then they had this development car that they didn't know what to do with so they sent it over to Polestar and what they did they raised it up a little bit in order to house the battery pack here in the bottom and that's why it has these weird almost like a lifted sedan proportions to it that is because it wasn't initially meant to be an EV and they just raised the body you can see it here that it is sort of an, an additional piece at the bottom down here that houses the battery pack it's still a very good looking car if, if I was to think about an Apple car I think Polestar would come closest to what I would think Apple design like all the design clients ever I've worked with wanted to have in the products but if uh, Apple were to ma make a car I think it would look very close to what Polestar is doing right now you still have very Volvo-ish designs here as well with the headlights and the grille and then moving on to the con the production version the Polestar 3 that they just unveiled we're going to talk more about this in just a second you now see that we have a clear identity a distinct identity for what Polestar is it's no longer just Volvo headlights and Volvo grills it now morphs into its own identity and I think that's so cool from such a young company to have this strong brand identity already in their products and that they manage to mix as I said this emotional lines like we have for example here is shoulder this sharp line right here and the sharp nose in the front end with this grill that now houses all the technology in the car the radars and so on and we also have of course I gotta bring in the O2 concept that they decided to put into production and I'm really really excited about that because it looks absolutely fantastic this car as well so this is going to be the Polestar 4 this is the precept concept but they've already uh, confirmed that this is actually going into production and from what it looks like it's going to look pretty much identical to to the precept concept which is also pretty cool so let's have a look at the um, 
Polestar 3 here, and let's see what's going on. What I love about this is this is Polestar's first SUV, and SUVs, uh, they're not easy to get right in proportions, because you're starting at a starting point where you have to raise it up, you still wanna make it look sporty, pretty much every single SUV for some reason, they wanna have a sporty look, even though it, it kind of fights against the proportions of the car. It, it's hard to make this car look sporty when it sits so high, but what they've done here is, I think they've done a fantastic job making this look look very agile and light even though it weighs close to 6,000 pounds this specific car but we still have a clear identity in the front end product design very Daniel Simon Tron legacy style where you have uh, simple geometries like this which has some nice radius to it to them and also another very important key feature in the designs of Polestars is the chamfers. There are beautiful chamfers all over this design. We have a chamfer right here, as you can see. We have another chamfer up here in the hood that goes into this integrated wing. So the air flows in right here and then comes back up up here so this is a wing and then we have the same integrated lidar system or all the technology is just smacked into this grill area with the cameras and we have a clear identity in the front end you know that this is a Polestar it can't be anything else when you look at this car and I love that about Polestar so looking at the side view this is what I'm talking about it's very hard to make a, or a SUV look sporty but just look at how gorgeous this is, specifically this gorgeous roof line that goes into the greenhouse, into the window, and then up. And you can see that it's, it looks almost like it's a, a continuous curvature going down. But if we look closely, you can see that the roof line is actually going straight here. So it's, it, they're, they're playing a, a trick on your, uh, on your eyes here because it's not a continuous curvature. They need to have pa uh, a headroom for the rear passengers here as, as well as the front passengers obviously so they can't dip this line too soon so right about this point this is where it starts to slope down and, and then goes into this nice beautiful integrated wing that we have in the rear end of this car I think it's a fantastic looking design and the thing that I said this is close to 6,000 pounds but they made it look a lot lighter and that has all to do with graphic design I think this is the performance version, so this is equipped with the 22-inch wheels. Standard is dual motors with the 21-inch wheels. But look at the graphics here. This black piece like we, that we have going all around the bottom part of the car. What this does is it takes away so much mass from this design, and specifically when the car is white, like we have right here, it kind of makes this melt away. If we were to have this in white, it would look like a lot heavier car than what it actually is. And that is a genius play with graphics, how you can implement graphic design to communicate what it is you want without taking away the practicality of having an SUV. Last but not least, before we jump into the interior, is just look at this rear end and the graphic design. We have very simple lines, one line going here, another line going in the lower part, and then we have another chamfer right here, this chamfer. Another cha special, you know, <laughs> design feature of Polestar, these chamfers that goes all around the car. I absolutely love it. You also have a chamfer up here, which I think is gorgeous because this piece is very Polestar to me and very Volvo. That piece that kind of wraps around the D-pillar and goes up with the body like that. I think it's a beautiful touch. You can see it cl more clearly here, obviously, in the side view this body panel and you can see the chamfer here as well creating this product design feel and then this in combination with this shoulder with this sharp muscle line that goes above the rear axle it mixes two completely different philosophies of design you have product design and the emotional automotive design in a very nice package and then you have a nice light bar here as well stretching all across very thin very athletic looking it's not overstated it's just a simple graphics that's there and you can for, for a function and that's about it it doesn't have too much styling going on if there's one thing that i would change on this rear end is this piece so this additional piece doesn't seem to fit 
this design and the reason I'm saying that is it looks like it's a, a piece that's been put on like an afterthought because if we look at the front end it has a similar design like this with two uh, two lines and then we have an indent going in like this so we'll look at the front view you have the same line right here two lines right here and then an indent but look at this it doesn't look like it, it here you can see that it doesn't put an additional piece to cover the end point it just kind of melts into the body and i think it, it would have been better if they did something similar in the rear end maybe have flag glossy graphic right here but not adding this uh, kind of shield back there because it, it to me that's the only thing that that uh, ruins the, the the cleanliness of this rear end other than that it's just a stunning looking machine and another thing i want to point out here is the stance of this car it's a properly stanced suv you rarely see this coming out from the factory but have a look at how tight the wheel sits in line with the top of the of the fender usually the wheel sits a little further in but having it out like this push the wheel out it makes it look like it's solid and then it's sitting properly on the ground perfect stands for an SUV from Polestar. Now, last but not least, let's jump in to the interior. Let me let me talk a little bit about what I think about this interior. I do know that Polestar is the essence of what Scandinavian design is supposed to be. So is Volvo. But at the same time, I think that would give an opportunity to design the interior more than what it is right here. This to me feels like it's a, a too simplistic interior. It's a nice, clean space to sit in. But with all the materials that we have up in Scandinavia, the wood and all that, I want to have some of those features and, and, and textures in the interior. Like we have on the... I would much rather have a C40 recharge type interior in the Polestars. Specifically, if, if you're paying $90,000 for a car, I don't just want to have two iPads on the dash, which is exactly what we have in this case. I want to have some nice... Uh, materials and nice textures, housing the technology and the old traditional and the new working in some sort of symbiosis. I think that's what you want when you're paying $90,000 for a car. The, don't get me wrong, I still think this is a gorgeous interior, very simplistic, but I don't think the, uh, the displays are integrated well enough for this type of segment of car. They just look like they, they are floating in, in mid-air, basically, with no connection to the surrounding designs, if that makes sense. So overall, I think Polestar has done a fantastic job again. Uh, I can't wait to see where they are heading from here. They're, they're starting to get confidence and now in their design DNA, you can definitely tell that from the, I think they started with the precept concept when it really hammered in the front fascia and the overall styling design philosophy of Polestar. And this just embodies that gorgeous design that we've seen in the O2 concept and the precept into an SUV form, which is not an easy thing to do. So well done Polestar, and I can't wait to see this car out on the streets.